depending on how they go with where the fuck did that missile come from game spotting system much hello G'day, I'm Ash. I hope you're all doing fantastically well. Welcome to yourselves to another War Thunder video. Now, today we're going to be talking about something that is particularly interesting, although it is it really in the same hindsight. Now, the background right now will be MiG 21 MF, the German MiG 21, uh, rank 6 by rank 10.7. It's got R60s times 4, no flares, no armor protection, has radar. Moving on. Today, I thought I'd talk about the possibility of what I discussed in what would happen in War Thunder in 2021. Are we going to see a split of the aviation tech trees and the, and the ground tech trees into something like we have with the blue water and the coastal fleets with their naval? And a few of you brought up some interesting comments regarding the subject, so we'll briefly discuss those today. The video in question was what is coming to War Thunder in 2021, and at the start I suggested, in fact I even said, that one of the developers was looking heavily into splitting the aviation and ground trees into two separate lines. That way we at least have or two separate tech trees, like for example in Naval here you have the coastal and you have the blue water. Now the advantage is of twofold. One, you get several different types of new people coming through specifically to play different types of content. For example, I have a friend of mine who is just heavily into World War II technology. He doesn't care about anything past World War II, 1945, 1946, or even 1947. Pushing that boundary, I have other friends who only play DCS and other flight sims and play a lot of arcade stuff. We would love to see a verse and a diverse sex selection of aircraft and, and vehicles, and they would prefer not to play through the World War II stuff at all and start with a reserve tier sort of battle rating system like with how we see the destroyers. Destro destroyers for naval are at 3.7, they are a reserve destroyer. So will we see this happen? Who knows? Let's get into some more data. Overall it's not a bad idea to split up the tech trees, but it would definitely be a large change that would affect the majority of the entire player base. The current grind for tech trees in, in, in general is just extremely long, it turns away many new players as well as experienced players like myself. But top tier matchmaking you know, has always been a mess, and even though it has been better recently, I think it 100% can still be improved. And it'd be awesome to have a, a, a similar matching BR for that of ground and air, so that 1950s and 60s tanks can sort of line up and be in, in a sort of similar era at the top tier of each tech tree. Obviously, then you can get into repair costs that shouldn't be used to balance these vehicles. The battle rating should, but that's a separate subject. And while this game is entirely progression focused, I entirely think that, this is my own personal opinion, there is no incentive for you to go play a previous vehicle that you might have unlocked a few years ago, unless you're going back there specifically because you enjoy those type of content. The game's progression system is set up so that you go from starter vehicles and then early pre-World War II, then World War II, then Cold War, then to modern warfare with what we have. And skipping and not needing to play a large section of vehicles just to get into the modern stuff will probably end up by breaking Matchmaker and breaking the game in general. Although Naval seems to be particularly fine at the moment, mind you nobody plays it. And essentially like any and pretty much every other game with a progression system, you start with the weakest, usually the oldest vehicles, have to play a ton to get to the newest, most powerful vehicles. However, with how much Gaussian has been rushing the latest and greatest, they have neglected the research, training and even repair costs of vehicles, which have gotten exponentially higher only for a marginal increase in research points at Silver Lion gain. And this scares off newer players who might be more interested in main battle tanks than interwar tanks or World War II vehicles, for example. Some players have suggested that Gaussian make a whole new game for modern vehicles, which undoubtedly has its merits, but it also has its downsides and takes a lot of amount of work to do, since they really need to make a whole new game and requires its all, well, its own resources and its own player base, cost-wise. So that brings with it business costs and all sorts of other issues. And people have suggested that there be two ranks, a rank 1 reserve and a rank 2 reserve, and that would be... <laughs> Basically, in terms of a grind choice between modern and classic, instead of single reserve tier, there would be the current rank 1 reserves would remain, and then the players would go there if they wanted to research through the iconic and chunky uh, vehicles, and then obviously the people who want to research the new things could uh, basically progress up to where they wanted with the Cold War and, and so on and so on vehicles. 
And with every edition of new vehicles and new aircraft tanks and ships and helicopters and the like, there's going to be more countless examples of where this might be needed. And uh, something like this will probably draw and allow new players to be drawn into the advertising of Rank 6 to start off at the most closer to their goal and with vehicles that aren't from a whole different era. And obviously the research points and gains will probably have to be adjusted, but it's an interesting idea that I think could possibly work. Provided it's done correctly, it is Gaussian we're talking about, and War Thunder is almost fun. And War Thunder is a War Thunder problem, as I've always said, but there are other a couple of implications. Again, this idea is all about separation, and while the change is significant and would require much work considering how many vehicles in the game, it might be a little bit easier for them just to do battle rating decompression. It should affect a vehicle balance, and it probably will affect matchmaking, but it wouldn't affect the different vehicle specifications and it would all separate the errors from each other. The new players wouldn't have to spend nearly as much time in the lower, ve lower tier vehicles, if they don't want to and obviously this is you know increasing the overall high skill and increasing player counter numbers at the higher end unfortunately i don't see this idea being particularly helpful progression would be smoothed out so that players would have a true sense of pride and accomplishment as they'd be unlocking various different vehicles that they wanted instead of grinding for a few variants of different vehicles that they didn't want Finally, it'd be best to wait for more vehicles to be added before implementing this. It should be reasonable to add, probably within the later part of this year. Unfortunately, this also brings an issue into event vehicles and obviously premium event vehicles and exclusive stuff, as well as a whole host of different other issues too. So it's not so streamlined, and if it doesn't make you know, War Thunder money, well then it's not going to be necessarily too successful. So let me know what you think about splitting the tech trees of maybe the air or ground into how they are with naval and let me know what your thoughts and opinions are on that topic anyway i hope you enjoyed this short look at what i think particularly honestly i don't think it all go down too well but that's just my opinion and you've watched this video so thanks for watching catch you next time